Hey guys, so I was just watching some YouTube and I was listening to a game developer talk about his level design and I uh, was struggling with it pretty hard so I thought I'd go ahead and make a little video about it real quick. So we'll keep this kind of brief and short but basically uh, I'm going to show you something real quick. We're going to look at a mood board here. So this is the Islands of Adventure theme park, right? And so theme parks in general are pretty well designed in the sense that they want to usher in as many people as possible through the main gate they kind of have them go out in different directions to explore the park, right? And so in your video game levels, this is what you're trying to do as well. You're trying to uh, push them through into different directions where things might slow down a little bit more. Uh, so if we look at the theme park here, the main entrance, there's not much going on here. The entrance, there's some restrooms, first aid, and a little smoking section. But uh, these little areas that are marked in green, you see, uh, visit any time, I guess, is the, the idea here. Uh, or to the legend, I guess they don't say it, but a lot of these are little shops in here and stuff like that as well. And um, there's even a restaurant kind of right here, another restroom. Uh, but once you get through this little um, gauntlet here, you can consider this like a a starting point. This is maybe like where you just start traversing the uh, the level, but you come to your first big decision right here, and so now you can make a choice. You go either left or you go right. Okay, and then maybe you have like a little overlook position. They can kind of see the environment, with the view or whatever. So you need to think about these kind of things when you're creating uh, levels for games because you're going to start breaking down your environments this way, more or less in a very similar fashion. Uh, so this could, could be considered like an entire arena perhaps, or just like a courtyard or something. Uh, but then maybe there's a bad guy area here, boss bad guy here, or uh, some little shop you need something from, right? So you can start breaking these little areas down. But look at the pathway here. So we chose right. Now we're entering this way. We can choose left or right again, right off the bat. Okay. So main pathway will take you all the way through here. But this one, yeah, you can get a little bit confused. Maybe it's a shortcut. Maybe it's lost up in here, something like that, right? Here's a little section that dips off into the back doesn't maybe have any real gameplay mechanic to it, but maybe there's something back here you can find or discover, some loot, something like that, right? So as we go through the rest of this, we're just going to look at the rest for the most part. It's the same kind of thing over and over. I go to the left here. This is a dead end, I think, on the left, but go to the right. It loops back around. These little things can be a lot of fun, but ultimately you're going to end up going straight down the middle, more than likely. Uh, now you got a choice, go off this way or just keep going, right? And once again, same process here, section here. Okay, let pin back up. Got a little section here where maybe uh, you encounter some bad guys, who knows? But some shops to explore, some loot in here perhaps. It gets you ready for like a, a boss battle or something, right? where you go into the dungeon or whatever that ends up being. So you get the idea, right? Now, this is where it gets fun. Uh, this is someone's haunted house, I guess, that they came up with a little floor plan for it. Pathway, marked in green all the way around. Uh, but this is a building, right? It's just a square, right? So it's nothing is worse than creating a convenience store, right? We're all aware of gondolas, right? These things. So, but a convenience store, they're made for expediting a individual into the shopping area at any point as fast as possible and back in and out, right? So they come in the front door and here, you got food and drinks, whatever. You got all the drinks on the wall here, but you can literally go from the front door, beam it down any aisle, right? Beam it down this aisle, go all the way through to the back, and get to this other little section back here like it was nothing. Even a side door to help make that even faster, right? So think of it like this when you're laying something out. Uh, what people do in real life isn't usually very fun for gameplay, all right? Just pointing this out because it's meant for speed. It's meant to be efficient. It's meant so that you have plenty of access to all these different areas. Uh, but whereas in real life, or excuse me, in a video game, 
real life. Um, we're looking at something more like this, right? Where, hey, you come in the door, you got to traverse this dangerous pathway. You finally get a little break here. Maybe this, um, this isn't actually where you're supposed to be able to go to in this haunted house, but maybe there's some stuff in here you can look through and find. Maybe there's a little little hidden room back here. Got to come back. You know, don't make it too long. Maybe there's a quick exit door here. So you have all these different little rooms. Perhaps you could duck in and out of or something. I don't know. That's not how this is actually set up. But. And then you find all of your stuff. You fight some bad guys in this area. And you go traversing again on a pathway somewhere else. Maybe you finally unlock the back side of this door. So if you ever had to go back, you could as well. And this is kind of like a gallery. It's not A lot of times there's like non-playable areas where you just look at stuff. It's fun to look at. Right, it might have to have a little storyline or something like that, um, like museums and things like that. So this could be the same deal, or this could be a boss or something before you leave the building. Simple enough of an idea. So what this is representing here is that it's a breakup. It's breaking up a cube or a rectangle into a much more crazy kind of a setup and layout. All right, and. A lot of games do that, so they don't set them up like this. Uh, you don't just go from point A to point B as fast as possible. Actually take your time and get hung up in certain little areas. So you can plan this kind of stuff out a little bit in 2D, uh, but it's going to take a little while until you get used to it. So like you enter a building, here's like the doorway, and now you have like a couple rooms you can explore along the way, but now you're pushed back out this way. Nothing too crazy, but it's a lot better than being able to go like, here's the doorway, and I'm, I'm out. I'm going right out the door, you know? Not even bothering with those two rooms. So plan these things out. Now, when you're doing larger levels, okay, more than likely, at least the way I've always made maps, start with, like, the limits of your map, how big it can be. And so you might have, like, a player start area, something like that. Uh, you have to determine what you're doing. So maybe there's, like, courtyard here. Just like IOA there, Islands of Adventure. You might have your courtyard, and this might usher you off in a certain direction, start you on a pathway, but maybe you have like little breakups in here, got little side routes, kind of like that section that we explored there on the map, where you can kind of get tangled up and lost, but maybe you have a direct route as well that goes to a battle arena, right? There might be some little battles in here, might be some little crevices to explore. Uh, but you might end up in a battle arena, which eventually shoots you back out towards the start. Another path, right? So if you're doing something very linear, this can happen quite a bit. Where you're just going through these little different areas to uh, battle or whatever. And it's almost like a crazy maze of sorts. You'll see a lot of games do this. And this is only the 2D representation of this. You can also do this in 3D, which gets even crazier. But like vertical, think vertical. You have to climb something to get somewhere. So you might come over here and say there's like a crane here. Horrible crane. Crane. A radio tower, crane, something like that. And now you might have to like zip line over back to the building you were in, but on the roof now. Right? And then now you got to jump down, you're back in this courtyard, you got to come back through here, and maybe there's like another little, <laughs> I don't know, it's just all kinds of, there's like a dungeon underneath everything, right? Like a sewer that you got to go through. Then it pops you back out to a big courtyard over here where you have a boss fight. You see what I'm saying? This is where level design gets crazy. It's really up to you to determine what you're going to create and what you're not going to, or how you're going to have your characters run through things. Just remember, players are like water. They they run through things as fast as possible. So anything you could do to break that up, it's a good idea. Also, uh, we'll jump over to Blender now. I kind of blocked out this little section here. Nothing real fancy, but uh, I think Left 4 Dead and maybe like Half-Life 2, several other video games, more linear-like in nature, are great representations of like how you can um, place things when it comes to like kit items, finding loot gear, picking up survivors or whatever. 
those kinds of things, right? But this is, uh, level design is what we were just playing with. This is basically the idea of level design, right? Coming up with kind of a flow to things so that it's not so boring, right? And so I use that convenience store as an example here. And I went ahead and blocked out kind of a Left 4 Dead style uh, little setup here. So we got a convenience store. Let's say you're running down a pathway through the woods. There's cliffs on each side and uh, 100 killer zombies were trying to attack you or something, right? So you're coming out of that area where you just got beat up and you had used all your bullets and stuff. Um, those are the things you need to think about. And so huh, without it wigging out on me here, hopefully we can get through this. But uh, if I hit Shift tilde and G key and Blender here. So you might be running out of this area. These are supposed to be cliffs. That's supposed to be a building over on this side. That's a cliff on right there. But it's like some sewer that you're kind of like water runoff system you're running up or whatever the case may be, right? And so uh, eventually you make your way up onto the side over here. Hopefully it'll let me <laughs> sink it into it for some reason. All right. Anyways. Oh, I, don't, I didn't hit G. I have to hit G, guys. Um. All right, so you get up here eventually at some point. There's like a semi-truck on its side. You can see you're heading towards the city or whatever the case. Uh, but now you're in this little arena, basically. But it's not a combat arena. It's just an arena to explore. Uh, and so, you know, if your players are doing fine, they might just be tempted to, like, run through this thing as fast as possible and get out through the other end. But if you notice, I kind of had this idea that maybe I create some, like, roof damage where uh, stuff's falling down this little convenience store the gondolas aren't realistically set up but they create kind of like a little maze here so someone comes in this door you know they might go to the register side oh they're road blocked here if they could jump over it great they'll just jump over it right and then continue on uh, but some games don't let you jump over things so they'd force you to go this way go around this way so if it was a haunted house right you get the idea it takes you a little bit longer to get over here but better yet, there's another avenue you could take, which is over here. This would have a door, which will slow you down. So it'll just take a second to open it, but you'd be inside the freezer where all the drinks are, right? On the back side there. And so now you might be in here and you might find some cool loot or something maybe, perhaps. Or it's just cool to walk through. And then you can come back out this side, but that's going to slow you down uh, coming through here as well. So these kinds of things can come into play and they're pretty useful. Just keep in mind, level design is not necessarily environment art, right? They're kind of synonymous with each other, though. Like, um, depending on like what you're working on and what kind of capacity, if you're doing like indie development, more than likely you're going to get probably going to be doing level design and environment art. There's a good odd chance that'll happen. So you really need to be pretty talented at what you're doing. But um, if you're working in a bigger uh, studio or something like that. You might just be doing level design, and while another guy might be actually creating the environment pieces or whatever the case, right? So you need to think about these two things as a little bit separate uh, in in nature to some extent, even if you are doing both of them. But uh, you can see here, like these roof tiles. This is kind of my standard modeling setup right here, right? My roof tiles would be probably a little bit lower, not necessarily like that. This, right? My modular series. Uh, this is the same idea of the wall, except right now it's a solid piece. I didn't split it in half like this. Right? So it's just a solid piece for now, but same idea, same concept. It's center aligned in the corner. Um, so you can start setting up your modular components. You have different kind of little roof sections. And you can see this one right here. Even though this is damaged, it's actually originally it was made from the same sections here it's just a boolean cut ran through it and then a little additional modeling you can add some damaged textures in these areas and little, little details that really sell the believability that it all this was once maybe up there it's all now falling down inside of here um, and then of course you know make like a little food session or a food concession area like hot dog stands or rollers or if it's a convenience store make it look like a convenience store basically but you can make everything fit on the grid if you wanted to, including little gondolas and things like that. So, But you can start to build up the believability of an environment at blockout. It doesn't have to happen later on. All right? 
it, it can happen pretty quick with just like basic squares, cubes, and shapes and stuff like that. So now here is another building, right? So maybe on the back side of this building, there's like some fencing or something that keeps you from going outside of the area. But if you do that. I want to point out something though. Even though fences are really fun to use, sometimes they're too much. Sometimes you might want to actually just create like unpassable areas that are drop downs as well. So not just maybe like cliffs going up, but like cliffs going down could be quite useful. Things like that. Or uh, in my case, I had that that was supposed to represent like a semi truck trailer on its side. Perhaps, right? Something like that, anyways. Punch it. Punch it usually works pretty well, too. Punch. Normal. Oh. Yeah. Cool. So, we get the idea, right? We can kind of make these little things happen and occur along the way here and then you know fill in the background of course too so like just random kind of buildings and stuff don't hurt got quite nice and so you get you starting to get that left for dead kind of esque feel here hopefully this could be a roadway you probably want to make a little modular section for but you could actually make this a road. That would be quick. If you had did it modularly, better off, but maybe. Not always. It depends. Some roadways you don't. There you go. But now it's starting to become believable though. It's starting to be something. But the level design ultimately this is what this is not environment art necessarily. Like, this is figuring out what's going to work in these areas, right? Like, what what would you want to do right here? Do you want people to just fly through it, or do you want to try to slow them down somehow? And that's really what you're going to want to do in a lot of parts of your level. Is just try to find ways to slow people down, or reutilize space so you don't have to um, force a load again and again and again, but keep the experience fresh basically like you you know maybe maybe we go into this area here right and like you could go out through the back door or something and then maybe there's like some fencing or something back here maybe you're not supposed to go all the way through it like too crazy like maybe some fencing uh, goes into like an alleyway with like trash cans or something right and but back here, see if I can do this. <laughs> yeah. Let's say back here though, it's more or less a dead end over there. But there's like a uh, a ladder over here, and that little ladder, which is blocked now. Let's say it brings you up onto the roof, and then once you're up on the roof, I don't know where would you go could uh, maybe have it take you over here where you can somehow cross back over here or go that way or go that way or you could give players a choice I guess you could just make this instead of it dead editing give them a really rough choice of like um, which way do you want to go that way or that way you know, things like that. Then I have another building over here. I'll use this guy for now. Here. That might be one way building. You might have another way that goes through a junkyard. Right? Not very linear when you start doing that too much, but you get the idea. You can do that, but you would consider the whole area as a play arena. So when you start doing that next section, right over here, 
consider that whole section the play arena. And that's part of your choices on the way, because you're going to have, more than likely, you're going to have the player come in here, make a choice left or right. And now, they might fight in a big area with a bunch of cars, trash dumps. Maybe there's trash dumps in the middle, like big piles of trash that they got to navigate through. And then over here, maybe there's like a um, bit of a uh, convenience store. Maybe it's like the office of the dump. Might be like a little fence here. Maybe they got a battle. Some like guard dogs. Like there's like a fence here or something. And that's the exit where you're trying to go. Little dogs you have to fight over here. And this old man with a shotgun over here, guarding his, um, his junkyard, right? You get the idea? Like, it's it's not pretty right now, but that's how you plan it out. You could literally sketch them this, pretty much this crappy. It doesn't matter. Um, once you start laying the kit out, right, and this all starts to become a thing much, much quicker, especially if it's getting blocked in first, right? And so, um, play with those ideas, guys. Don't be afraid of um, creating arenas, traversing pathways that sometimes you might want to mix it up, whether they get attacked on a pathway or an arena or vice versa. Like some some areas like this convenience store would probably be real good for like a resupply where you get attacked along the pathway. Um, once you resupply here, you might end up in this arena here where uh, you could consider this like a tiny little traversing pathway perhaps. Uh, but this arena here, ultimately, you would end up fighting again, and you might get worn down. So you might get back out onto the street over here and continue the fight, because this might not be very heavy fight. But so you just keep going through the level, and then ultimately you would have little sections like this uh, connected, right? So like, you might just uh, get out here. There's a roadway. You have to like go along the roadway and kind of fight down this next traversing pathway. Maybe it's like a little city block thing. Okay, so that could be considered your arena pathway. Okay, you see how this is starting to work out? So we had a maybe like a mountain path or sewer path pathway or something. Whatever this thing was, like cliffs on it. Side. All the way down. And now we're over here. Very simple in nature, but basically at some point you're going to want to shift everybody back. Maybe there's like a hill here, right? So like now everybody's got to climb up through this hill, up this pathway. You might want to have a little break in a building right here, right? And you can work this into a complete square, basically. Just have people going back and forth and all over. Probably even tighter than this, like to really utilize a bunch of space. You could do it even tighter. But sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming, like feeling like a rat in a maze. Sometimes you need to leave it a little bit more open as well. So it's up to you ultimately. But I just wanted to talk about this because a lot of a lot of guys don't really understand this. I, like I'm not trying to get too technical with it or nothing, but uh, you do want to do this and don't forget these little areas like this. Add little additional areas for people to explore and other little side paths, perhaps. Right, so you can add little side paths. They basically do the same thing, or you can bypass or skip or um, whatever, all kinds of things. But it should be pretty fun. You should be able to just look at this less as like a. Um, it has to be a perfect scenario type thing every time, and then uh, just block out an area, gray box it, white box it if you need to, and then um, go ahead and just have somebody play on it run through it with some really crappy bad guys and ask them if it's fun, right? If it seems fun and it, it works, then, then make it. Especially if you're working on a project you're trying to sell, right? You need to get those um, testers in there as soon as possible on this kind of stuff. Like, just make it look pretty enough that, like, they can understand the gameplay mechanics of it at least. Like, is it going to be fun to play here or not, right? And then uh, they're flying, and, like, you should be able to monitor these things, too. Like, you should be able to record their data of which ways they went. And so if you have a group of them, you should be able to 
plot it on the map basically and figure out what they're flying through too fast and then rearrange things as needed don't think you're stuck in stone but you will have to test it for sure and it's probably more than likely you're not going to have all those stuff to you know like record that data as well more than likely so you'll have to build that stuff too so, but with a little bit of common sense and uh, putting a little bit of logic behind it you can start to really um, elaborate this stuff just without even needing all the uh, the testing you know so just keep that in mind anyways that's it for this video guys i just wanted to talk about it you guys really struggle with um, level design not necessarily environment art but level design yeah. so hopefully it helped out a little bit just keep that in mind some of these things look into it further though uh, there's like little arrangements that make for more fun experiences and less fun exper uh, experiences uh, they're kind of hard to find but they're not always necessarily about video games it could just be games in general like puzzle games so don't forget about your 2d puzzle games and things like that so anyways hope you enjoyed and i'll check you guys out in the next one all right take care